Hey guys, welcome to a new video format I'm trying out, which is a little bit more of a vlog style content where I wanna just sort of share what's going on behind the scenes, you know, where different designs are up to, the state of firmware releases, that sort of stuff, um, and kind of provide uh, a platform where I can, you know, more casually talk about uh, what's going on, some timeframes with, um, you know, new releases or bug fixes. Um, and if you guys have questions specifically about stuff in the video, then you can leave a comment and, um, you know, that's that's a much easier way to discuss the, the relevant content. So, yeah, welcome. A couple of things to talk through today. Big one is Bridge OS. So, it might seem like there's been a bit of a lull in terms of um, development on that. It's anything but. I'm actually in the middle of a really big uh, code base uh, refactor. Um, so what that means is there's a lot of low level underlying drivers that were written for um, your Bridge 6 or Bridge 4 that control things like the, the flexi ports, the display, the menu system, all that sort of stuff. And a lot of those were created back in 2019, 2020. Um, and at that time, when we first started uh, developing the Bridge 6, I wasn't really sure what it was going to be. It just started out as a bit of a passion project um, between Simon and I. And I think there's there's some parts of the firmware that, that reflect that that could really use an overhaul for, um, uh, you know, speed, reliability, stability, and performance, all that, all that good stuff. So it's an opportunity to do that. Now, the the other thing is that the, the development environment that a lot of that was written in, the way the code base was structured, was great for one device model and, and sort of one board variant. And then, um, you know, we realized, hey, people really want a Bridge 4. It's a really cool product. So we introduced the Bridge 4. Then we fortunately were able to be really flexible and agile with our manufacturing during the, the chip shortage, which has fortunately eased up a fair bit now. But yeah, so there's a couple of different hardware variants which are just running, you know, maybe some different changes on the board and things that require, um, you know, a slight tweak of, of the firmware to make sure everything's playing nicely. So there's that as well. And as that started to build up the code base and that that development environment has gotten more and more complex to maintain and that's led to some of the issues that you see where it's actually maybe a hardware dependent bug. And that's not that that hardware variant has some sort of issue with the hardware. It's that there's sort of just a, an interfacing layer of, you know, what, what pins are connected to what uh, in, in the electronics, what, um, you know, what, what the hardware is doing on that particular chip model that it has been has gotten really difficult to maintain and that's just you know you, you're a bit tired or you're off or you forget one step in a thousand um, and that's easy for bugs to be introduced like that it's not a sustainable workflow for where we're at now so that's the other issue so i'm actually porting over to a sort of a new development environment that's going to streamline everything and be much more scalable um, from here on out it's going to make my time more efficient and effective. It's going to mean uh, more firmware releases um, a lot more quickly with better stability. Um, you know, new features being introduced more quickly that are really stable and well tested. Um, and also, you know, way less chance of sort of little bugs creeping in um, or not being picked up in the first place. So that's all really good. And that's underway. It's actually progressing really well and it's almost ready for um, maybe some early beta access in the, in the coming weeks. So I know there's um, the, the two, two of the big issues at the moment is um, depending on your hardware variant and, and choosing some flexi port modes um, can cause the device to sort of wig out and say, oh, you know, um, no deal, um, which, which sucks, I get that. And then also some issues with the web editor. Um, now I've narrowed this down. It really helped most of the like 99.9% .9 of, of people having an issue with this are on Mac OS. Um, and I've sort of traced that down to a, a Mac OS specific um, driver with the, a serial USB device class. So all that to say that um, you've got a USB MIDI device and then you have a USB serial device and they're um, sort of different, um, you know, software devices, so to speak, running in the firmware, communicating differently to the computer and a, a computer is going to have different drivers to handle each of those um, each of those things, which, yeah, was great, but has become difficult to maintain. There is, you know, sort of a, a 
whether it's you know a, a bug or just a weird edge case in macOS uh, for the USB driver, I'm not sure. But yeah, some of those issues are certainly very difficult to replicate in Windows. So it's sort of this this Mac specific thing. So we've got a got a solution for that. We're actually going to be transitioning device API, which is how our devices communicate to the web editor, and that's actually uh, an open standard. You can go um, to the GitHub uh, repo if you're inclined and, and take a look at how you might want to you know craft some useful utility app for your particular application if you like yeah so we're going to be transitioning that to um uh, midi sysx or system exclusive packets so all the underlying you know mechanisms are, are still there but it's with this new kind of transfer method um and a lot of that handling is also being refactored and cleaned up um for better better stability and reliability so we're kind of aware of those things and we've got a plan and it's being dealt with now which is is really cool i know it can be a little bit frustrating just stay stay patient you know this isn't going to be a uh, four, five, six months, you know, down the track uh, release. Um, this is going to be coming as, as, as quickly as possible, sort of a matter of weeks, um, fingers crossed, not months. Um, but we'll have some more info out soon because um, I know it is really frustrating. Um, but it's sort of hard, you know, hitting those bugs in, in the current state of development is you feel like you're playing whack-a-mole a bit. You hit one thing and, and, and something else pops up because it's just so difficult to maintain across the different hardware variants. So streamlining that process is really key. So that's sort of the firmware side of things. Oh, where are we at? This is just a bit of a, a blog of, you know, what's been going on. Um, I'll try and release them fairly regularly so you guys can, if you're interested, you can watch along and, um, you know, find out a bit more of a behind the scenes from a development, you know, product development engineering perspective. So where, where are we at? The click, the click is cool. If you need to control things via relay, then it's perfect for that. The micro loop is, is a different story. We actually found, um, so a, a couple of people were having um, some issues from the devices that they, they, they pre-ordered at launch. Um, the micro loop was hard because we probably, well, not probably, we, we, we didn't do the best job on launching that. Um, it was a little rushed and it was also at the time where we were making a lot of changes and introducing new features with bridge OS and that that sucks because there was a there was a long delay in getting those units to you guys and that's something that we're, we're really aware of and we want to make sure it doesn't happen again so there was, there was an issue with a, a particular batch of you know components um, coming from uh, one of our suppliers and it wasn't that that was defective but it was very a lot more difficult to solder just that particular batch of that particular component had i don't know whether it was some intolerance in the manufacturing or something but um uh, it was causing some inconsistencies in the soldering process which was causing to you know like a loop um an audio loop not working or um you know some, something like that so yeah certainly if, if you're having an, an issue like that just get in touch we'll we'll replace your your unit um we'll make sure you're taken care of don't worry but in just taking another look at the design and thinking, okay, well, there's some opportunities to do this better. You know, let's let's hit some changes that I wanted to make. And so, from feedback from from the initial uh, micro loop launch, I've taken some of that feedback on board. So you'll see it's not currently for sale um, at the moment. Um, we've got almost ready to to share the new um, sort of hardware revision for that, and it's um, obviously you know sidesteps that um, uh, that component issue. Um, it's, it's, it's really rock solid, it's a great design, but also introduces a couple of really cool new features that you guys are gonna love. Um, so stay tuned for an announcement on that soon. Um, we've got some other really cool stuff in the works. It's just a matter of prioritizing, making sure that we're um, you know keeping on top of things. We can't sort of just can't pivot directions completely to this this one thing when there's you know there's some other stuff maybe with a an existing firmware release that needs to be handled first. So yeah, that's all for now. Bit of a stream of consciousness video. If you have questions about anything I've chatted about or want to know a bit more, then um, leave a comment. I'd love to to interact with you guys. I think that's it. You guys have a good day. Bye.